Hi everyone. Good morning. Just waiting for a few people to jump on. I forgot to grab something, so wait for it. I forgot to grab my flyers for what's happening. Silly me. All right. Hello. Hey, Cleta. How are you? Sorry, I'm a bit disorganized. Oh my goodness, it's a bit close, isn't it? I hope everyone is well and everyone finds me. I've got to tell people I was coming online today. I think you all know by now. Hi, Trish. Hi, Sherry. Sorry, you just saw my big butt, no doubt. I was, um, forgot my flyers to, uh, show you all and you know what i just said to myself before i press the live button not five seconds before oh, i need to get the flyers hang on i won't press the live button so what i do i press the live button oh i swear my brain doesn't want to work but how are we all hope you're all well and what's today tuesday so i hope you all got some crafting done on the weekend i got a little bit done I had a bit of a lazy weekend, so didn't get a great deal done. Hi, Joyce. Lovely to have you here. Don't forget to say hello if you're here and share my video to go into the uh, draw for a prize. Good morning, Jan. How are you? All right. So, my product of the week this week is these most gorgeous, gorgeous little ink pots they are divine all shimmery and just pot of gorgeousness just finished your stamp club club and it's monday night there trish yes well it's tuesday 1 p.m here so i was up nice and early had a cardiologist appointment this morning so hello Anne. you'll have to catch up with me later you're just going out to lunch okay no worries enjoy your lunch yeah, watch your replay later. Yes, yeah, up right and early for the cardiologist this morning. So, um, and I've sort of done very little since then. <laughs> That's a bit slack of me, I know. But anyway, right, you all know the drill. The uh, quick admin stuff first, out of the way. Right, virtual party. Uh, registration closes for this today, okay? Because I need to get goodie bags in the mail. So, if you haven't registered, please do so today. And that's October the 10th, 10th, sorry. Um, everyone gets a goodies bag. Registration is $15. On the night, there's live crafting demonstrations. There's challenges. In your goodie bags, you'll have some products, sample products. Um, you'll have some things for the challenges. There's going to be games to play, prizes to win. There'll be a prize patrol. Lots, lots of fun stuff. And if it's a success, it's the first time I have done one like this. Um, and if it's a su success, I can't talk. If it works well, let's say that. Hey, good morning, Debbie. Lovely to have you here. All right, if it works well, it's going to be um, the test run for a creative um, online convention type thing. So what I want to plan to do is twice a year, do an online, like a stamp camp, I guess. But because I am all online, I don't have local customers and my customers are spread all throughout Australia. Then I thought it would be fun to do something like online. So it would be like a, a weekend event similar to the online party that we're having. Um, everyone gets goodie bags. There'll be challenges. I'll run classes. Um, there'll be games, lots of things. And obviously, um, there'll be much more than what we're doing on October the 10th. But the October 10th event is just a... A little like a, a test run I guess to see how the the creative stamp camp type thing would go online so um, if you haven't registered for that please sign up um, the Santa's workshop online class registration is still open till mid next month so jump in and register for that $65 you get the stamp set embellishments and really really cute projects and they're not all cards so there's um gift giving ideas and things like that in that class hi lorraine lovely to have you here 
And also the Frosted Floral class is still open. Registration is closing at the end of this month. So if you haven't registered for this and you want eight great project ideas with kits and videos to use this gorgeous product suite, then jump online and register for that as well. Do you want to know what next month's online classes are? I'm going to release the next one on the 1st of October, which is not very far away. And I'm going to be using this, what's it called? I don't even know the name of it. Wait a minute. Making Christmas Bright product suite. So I'm going to have eight great projects around this product suite using primarily the stamp set. Um, so I'm going to be releasing that on the 1st of October. So if you're keen, sign up for that. And then on the 15th of October, the next class will be out. And that's going to be using the gorgeous Dashing Deer. So again, focusing on the stamp set and option to purchase the framelits. So that will be on the 15th of October is that online class will be released. All right, so what else do I have? That's it that I have to cover in our little admin promotional section bit. So... Yes, those deers are gorgeous, aren't they? I just love them. All right, so we're going to be doing some things with the shimmer paint. Really, really cute pots. And my special of the week is purchase any three of the pots. They come in four different colors. Purchase any three and you will get the Stampin' Sponges, spun, Stampin' Sponges for free. So, um... I'm going to turn you around and show you some techniques to use these shimmer paints because they're really addictive and they are really, really beautiful. Hello, Heather. Thank you for joining me. So, yes, let's get on with some shimmer paints. Turn you around and then we'll get creating. Okay, so can we see everything? I've brought my stand in a little closer today so that um, you'll be in my work area. Hey, Julie, thanks for jumping in. How's your daughter? I hope she's okay today. Julie's daughter, poor thing, came down with chicken pox. So I remember having that as a kid. Right, just going to find myself on my page so then I can see any comments because now I've turned you around I can't see my phone so just a minute bear with me and this is really slow and I know internet hasn't dropped out so I don't know what is going on there there I am okay so shimmer paint really really love this product it is so so cool just a bit moody poor thing she's probably itchy and just generally look all right so the shimmer paint we have it comes in four colors all right they are sold individually not like the brushes that are sold as a set these are individual so you can purchase them each i think they're 14 dollars a pot we have champagne mist Vegas Gold, Frost White, and Bright Copper. Right, so I have lots and lots of techniques with these shimmer paints that you can do. Now, I'm not actually going to be making a card today. I'm going to be showing you how to do the techniques. And the reason for that is that... I'm oh, sorry, my stand is crooked and it's worrying me. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, the reason for that is that the paints take a little bit to dry. So rather than smudge them, and I don't know if you can see in this card, you probably can't because of the glare on it. I'll try and get that glare off a little bit. If I bring it up, I don't know if you can still see it. You're up a little bit high, hey. Um, I've got two smudge marks here where my I got my fingers on the card and you can't see that or the light or the shimmer or anything oh my goodness what if I do that can you see the shimmer there on that now I've got to wait for my video to catch up with me yeah I don't think you're gonna be able to see the shimmer very well I don't know why that is 
If I rotate it around like this, eventually at one stage it's got to catch the light, yeah? No, it's just glaring for me on the playback. I don't know what's going on. But it's a beautiful, beautiful shimmer. Lots of things you can do with it. So for this one, I've just sponged the background, but I've also coloured it. This one is just a sponged background as well with a bit of a tint to it. So I've added a little bit of green to this one to get um, a green, sort of a greeny, browny tinge. This is using Pool Party and Balmy Blue. And this is another technique card that I've done is I've used it to stamp with. So I'm going to run through a few of these techniques today. And I don't know how well the shimmer is going to show for you. I can see it here and it's absolutely stunning. But whether it shows up on camera, that's another story. So you just have to buy them and, and believe what I say. <laughs> All right. So let's just grab. I have to stop saying so. So we did a theme. No, that's not the right song, is it? It's in that song, but I can't sing. Please don't let me sing again. For the sponging, all I did was use, use, I can't talk today, I can't talk ever, use one of our Stampin' Sponges. You can see this one I've used with a blue and a greeny tinge, and I think that was meant to be just white. So it does, can you see the shimmer on my hands? It won't dry. That's been in the bag for a couple of days, and it sort of just doesn't dry on those surfaces. It will eventually on your cardstock, but be, just be aware on your sponges and stuff, unless you wash them out, it's, you're going to get that um, colour transferred. So be really, really careful with that. So that I don't get any blue or green on where I want the white this time around, I'm going to use a new segment of sponge. Just so that I get no colour contamination. Uh, uh, uh. Right. <coughs> now, sorry, the paints. You do need to shake them. Hear that little ball inside? Shake them well because they are a paint. So this is frost white. So what I want to do is like recreate this card where I've got like the snow drift effect in the middle with the grassy and the blue in the sky. I'm going to, let me say, re try and recreate this card. Put it that way. So I'm just going to pop some of the paint on my um, sheet here. Um, yeah, you can heat set it. You don't need to heat set it. The only time you need to heat set it is when you're doing it on fabric because it will wash out if you don't. But on your um, papers, you don't need to heat set it. It will dry faster, obviously, if you put heat on it, um, but you don't need it to set it. It will eventually dry. So this one now, it's not rubbing off. I've let that dry. But um, if you're going to be using it, do it in advance. So that's why I can't make any cards today to show you because I need to let the paint dry before I can stamp on it. And I don't want to bring out the heat tool every five seconds to dry everything. So I'm going to show you the techniques and then show you a couple of the finished cards and the technique I used on those cards. And then, um, yeah, I might show you some other techniques tomorrow. So I'm just getting a sponge with the paint on it. And it does use a fair bit of paint, but you get a lot in those pots, surprising how much you get. And you just rub it straight across. So I'm just doing the middle. I want like a white band across the middle. And that's it. How easy is that? really really simple and i don't know if you're going to be able to see this shimmer i am going to try and hold it around in the different lights so that you can sort of see that shimmer it's really really beautiful so now i'm just going to wipe that bit up i don't want to transfer it if i don't have to just with a wet one just to get rid of the excess i'm going to add some more white here hi margaret thank you for joining and thank you for sharing just going to add a little bit more white and we're going to color it so i'm going to use pool party hi angie hi kylie so i just put one drop in because i want it quite subtle but if you wanted like a darker color just put more in i used our palette knives just to mix that around
You could probably add more than that if you wanted like a deeper green. But I wanted this card quite subtle. My black mat, it's actually a barbecue liner. Hi, Carol, from Bunnings. <laughs> and I, I bought it because um, the silicon mats we sell at Stampin' Up! are good for little projects. But when you want to get messy and big like this, you need something bigger. So um, a silicon mat is what you need. And I wasn't paying the exorbitant price they want to charge at craft shops for the branded ones. So I think this was like a $5 barbecue liner and it just works exactly the same. It's made of the same product and it works for me. All right, so I've mixed the green in and now I do have paint all over my fingers. When you use this product, you will get messy, okay? Like any paint or any sort of multimedia type product, which is what this is, you will get messy. If you don't like that, then get some of those disposable um, gloves and use those. I don't mind getting messy, but some people really detest it. So, hi Sue, thanks for watching. Don't forget that if you share, you're going to the draw for a prize. Right, so I've just mixed some Pool Party re inker in with the white shimmer paint. And the same as I did on the white, just straight across. Okay, and look at that. That is stunning. Now, it blends really easily as well. So you're not going to get like a lot of streaky look. But even if I did, it didn't worry me. Like this one was a lot streakier. Um, but it's meant to be outdoors, like the grass in the scene, so it didn't worry me that it was streaky. You could also use sponge daubers if you don't want the sponges. Um, and that also goes for my special of the week. If you don't want the sponges but you'd rather pack a sponge daubers instead, that's fine. Just let me know. All right, so now more white paint. I had so much fun playing with this paint on the weekend. It's like I could have gone on forever designing stuff. There's so many ideas popping in my head. It was heaps, heaps of fun. So now for this one, we have uh, Balmy Blue, which is my favorite of our blue, paler blues. So again, I'm gonna put two drops in this one only because I've got a lot more paint there. Just wipe the thing, tool, thing <laughs> all right mix in our blue ah oh, thank you thank you carol angie thank you all right and i've used the winter woods uh stamp set if you're not familiar with that stamp set so just mixing that blue in now if you could see the sheen on that paint oh it's so pretty and now just this side of the sponge is what i've used for my sky and then, again, just straight across. And there we have our background. You can make a curve in it if you want to have like a snow drift, but I just, I wasn't intentionally creating a shape on that one I just did exactly what I've done now and I have the uh, sky and the grass so that's it simple really cool technique and the shine is amazing so I know you probably can't see it properly on the camera but I will try and lift it up and can you actually see that shine let me know if you can oops and I just love the silicon mats because they clean up so easily. I mean, you could do this on scrap paper as well or on your normal grid paper. But why waste paper when you can just, you know, use a surface that's non-porous and it just wipes away. So, yes, you can see that sheen. Cool. That is so pretty. I love it. Oh, it's upside down. Who turned the sky green? Just turn it around this way. There we go. So that's all I did on this card. And then when it dried, I just stamped the normal winter woods trees um, and then added some ribbon and some embellishments. But that shine is so, so pretty. But like I said before, if you can see those splotches there and there, um, I didn't realize that when you're stamping on this paint, even when it is dry, it didn't dawn on me that the paper in now is not 
porous like it was before I put the paint on it. So whenever you, you stamp on it, it's going to take longer to dry. It's like using glossy white cardstock, I guess. Same principle. The paper is not as absorbent as it was before you put the coating on there. So your ink is going to take a little while to dry. So I stamped my trees and then was doing my embellishments and looked at it and went, oh, look at that. Got two great big fingerprints in it. So I didn't realize that I should have let it completely dry before I stamped on top. So that's just one little tip for you. All right, so that's one way of using the shimmer paints. I'll just move this aside. So here's another one, same principle. This time I just used the one color and I don't know what green it was I used. It might have been pool party. I don't think it was. Might have been. Um, and I had the sponge I used had a, a tiny, tiny bit of crumb cake on it. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's a lot uh, a um, couple of areas here that have like a swish of a, a brownie colour. And I guess when I looked stood, stood back and looked at it, I went, oh, well, that sort of looks like a cloudy sky, like a dirty, stormy sky. I don't know. So there's another one. And I just stamped on the back the trees in different shades. Um... And just embellishment. So there's a, a standard one colour background. Same principle. Just use the sponge across. Okay, another one I have done here is actually stamped with the paint. So, so easy to do and fantastic effect. So let me get set up for that one. So again, Winter Woods. I sort of just grabbed the one stamp set. Just easier when I was just making things up. And gold. Everyone needs gold in their life. I, I I love gold. Got to have it on everything. If you can't tell by all my jewellery. <laughs> Alright, so. All you're going to do for this one. Is grab a paintbrush. And paint it on the stamp. Now I don't have a normal paintbrush. I was going through all my stash of stuff. And I don't have a normal paintbrush. So I had. Some sponges. Like, not sponges, but one of those spongy, these things. Sponging brush. It's all that I had. Again, really, really easy. Shake the bottle well and mix the paint up. Oh, thank you, Chrissy. I'm glad you like the cards. You can see the shine on that one. I can actually see that on the replay. Yes, you've got to have lots of bling. So don't forget my product of the week. Uh, purchase any three of these paints. And you will go into the drawer for a little prize. Alright, so. Just going to paint it on. Now you don't want to coat it where it's really, really thick. But you want to make sure that it is covering the whole stamp. And then. How cool does that look? I wish now I had have bought that angel stamp that's in the catalog because that would look magnificent in this. I love those little angels. When you're using the paint like this and stamping, if you have a little bit too much on your stamp, you'll lose the pattern. And you can also feel the stamp move, but even when you don't have too much, when you're using paint or anything on a stamp, when you put it down, um, you can actually feel the stamp move a little bit. So you've got to be really careful to do straight up and straight down. Otherwise you will swoosh it and you'll lose the pattern in the stamp. Oh, and try and get them even, not like that. But anyway, you get the idea. So these paints are really versatile. A lot of people get scared when it comes to like a bit of multimedia like this because it's a bit different to just inks and paper. But it's worth um, getting them and trying them. And when someone shows you how easy they are to use, it's like, well, it takes all the scary away. Oh, ink. the inks look awesome when using shaving cream. Mix the inks with the shimmer paints. Oh, yes, of course. So it would be just uh, the shimmer paints with the inks, like like I did blending the colours, um, Angie? Or do you mean putting the inks on like you normally do and then the... Oh, you can see my head. Look at that. My head's getting in the way. Um, 
You know what I mean? Putting them on separately or blending them before you put them on the shaving cream. That's another cool like, technique. I hadn't thought of that one. So there we go. There's our trees, not stamped very evenly, but I am going to trim that. So how stunning does that look? That is really, really pretty. The one thing um, I'll say when you are cleaning your stamp, if you have used it with the paint, is it's probably best to wash it in warm soapy water to get rid of that paint. I cleaned mine with a baby wipe, then I spritzed it with our stamp, uh, Stampin' Spritzer to clean it, but I didn't go and wash it with, with um, warm soapy water because I found the spritzer got enough off, so that was good enough for me for the time being. Shaving cream and adding separately, that's really cool. Right, I'm going to move that out of the way now because I've shown you how to stamp. Now, don't waste this paint that is on your sheet. And I'm getting in one chunk of a mess here. So I'm not paying attention. Alright, just going to put my brush away so I don't end up with gold on everything. But don't waste this ink that's here. Grab some scrap cardstock. Let me just grab some. And smush it. And then you have bits that you can use later. So I'm just going to drag this cardstock through this. Just pick up whatever you can off there. And there I have a cool piece I can use as a background for a card later. So I'm going to put that aside to dry. Sorry, I'm just getting wipes out. That's why I've gone away. So don't ever waste stuff like this that's on your sheet. And because my barbecue liner slash silicon slash whatever it calls sheet is has a um, self sort of pattern in it, I'm going to end up with a, a pattern swoosh. Here we go. I can use them on projects later on and that would look really cool as a background. Okay. So, what else do I have to show you? Let's do some stenciling. Right. Here I've used it with a stencil. Really, really easy technique. Fantastic background for a card. And really simple. I love this stuff. It is really easy to use. So, you just grab your stencil. You grab a bit of blue cardstock. Put your stencil on. Now I normally tape these in place so they don't move. And you're going to end up with some really beautiful shimmery clouds. Which would look good on a baby's card. So let me just grab the white sponge I used earlier some more white paint that's all right so you can always come back and watch the rest of it in replay yes thank you and you have a great day too all right so just out with the paint you could use a sponge dauber for this i guess would probably be a little bit easier to handle and less messy but all you're going to do is dab on the paint because you're after a little bit of texture as well so by dabbing it and not sort of wiping it or blending it, you're actually going to get a little bit of like a texture look. And you can always come back in later and add more if you think your clouds are not bright enough. And my pots are going to end up in a really big mess because I don't wipe around the lid when I'm finished or the brim thing, rim, whatever it's called. So this is really cool. Another great way to use the paints. What's oh, this technique three, I think it is. So we've done 
normal just sponging on we've done stamping using stencils so there we go carefully going to remove that now try not to move the stencil and look at how pretty clouds so i got red on there there was red on my stencil put a greeting over that bit and you won't see it uh, I'm running out of places to put these things. Hang on a minute. <laughs> so I've got lots of wet samples everywhere now. All right. So there's another technique. Use it with stencils. Okay. we we'll put that there. Clean up and we'll get on to another one. So this is technique four coming up. So I bet you didn't think you could do so many things with these paints when you first saw them in the catalogue. Really cool, really versatile. We can paint with them and watercolour with them. So look at this gorgeous butterfly. I've used um, three of the colours in this one, the champagne, the copper and the gold. And I've just used an aqua painter with the paints to like give a, a watercolour effect, but you can paint with them straight out, right? This is a little bit diluted. And this is just a normal watercolour on Whisper White cardstock. But I wanted to show you what that looks like on the watercolour paper because I haven't done it on watercolour paper. So first of all, let's do the watercolour paper um, that I have on my desk somewhere. Here it is. Alright, so I'm going to choose copper because that's what it looks like in the On Whisper White. I'm not sure what it looks like on watercolour paper. I haven't done it. So you're just going to shake it up, make sure it's well mixed. Pour some out. So this is bright copper, this one. Add some water, just gonna water next to it and then blend it in. Look at that, so pretty, wow, beautiful, that is so shimmery, so there you go, watercolour with it, I want to try wetting and then adding the paint and see what that does just gonna wet a bit I've already got it dirty it may not work okay we'll come back we'll just let that dry and see what happens so you can watercolor with it too now we're going to paint our butterfly All right, so it's going to move that aside now to dry. Okay, so our butterfly. So pretty and sparkly. And that's all I did. I mixed the water with the paint. And again, like I said, it depends on how much water you add as to how much it will look like paint or how much it'll look like watercolour. I've probably got a bit too much paint in my mix here. So it's looking more like just a paint than a watercolour. Do need to add a bit more water. So I've embossed this butterfly in black so that because I'm using lots of water I didn't want it to run between sections and get muddy so I guess this is like your when you infill with watercolor technique I'm sort of like putting a lot in there sorry my head's in the way isn't it I've moved my stand forward so that I can work closer to how I normally work and I keep forgetting my fat head's going to get in the way. I'm sorry. OK. 
Okay, so there's all our copper pieces done. I'm just going to wipe this on my um, baby wipes. Run some water out to get it clean. So just clean it. It cleans off the same as any other thing you use with your Aquapin. Alright, so the champagne, I've used champagne, the champagne, champagne around the sides, <laughs> gold in the middle. <laughs> right, so now I'm going to use some gold, and there's a reason I'm going to put this quite close, because I want to smush what's left to get some backgrounds. As long as they don't blend together, I'm fine. See how I've added more water to the gold and it just looks a little bit weaker, paler, I guess is the right word. The sheen on this is amazing. I'm so happy that Stampin' Up! are starting to bring out a few more like multimedia, I guess you call it, stuff like this, like the paint. Now they just need to bring out gesso. That'd be really cool. Okay, so there's our gold done. You can even just paint this onto things like embellishments and let it dry. I guess that would work as well. All right, and now our champagne. Oops too much champagne I may not have mixed shook in that enough never mind all right add water so so pretty I think the champagne has got so much sparkle in it. It just seems to sparkle more than the others. I don't know why. It's like got um, more than just the, the shimmer in it. I know, it just seems to sparkle more. There we go. There's our pretty butterfly, all sparkly and shimmery. Yes, Cleta, if you put some in a spritzer with water, it works as well. I haven't tried it with the rubbing alcohol. I don't know whether that would work as well, but it probably would. So lots, lots of cool things you can do with it. So there we've just painted with it, we've watercolored with it. So that's techniques um, uh, four and five. One more technique to go. So I'm just going to move that aside for now. And then I'm going to mush up what I have there. I'm just going to find some white cardstock. Right, so I just grabbed a heap from my folder, junk folder. I'm just going to smush it. Oh, look at that. Wow, I'm going to leave that just like that. That is way cool. I'm seriously running out of desk space for all this paint that's drying everywhere. So these may not end up card backgrounds, but they'd be cool to punch things out with and just give that extra element to your cards. Look at that. That looks like um, coral leaves. Oh, yes, that's really pretty. It dries quicker with rubbing alcohol, does it? That's handy to know, Lorraine. Thank you for that. All right, I think I've smushed enough of that up now. I hate wasting things. Right. And now we're going to do some embossing with it. So hold your horses. 
I need to clean this up, move some things away. Right, so now I'm going to do emboss resist with it. So just your normal embossing. So I'm going to grab my stamp. Oh, that's not mounted. Right, if you've never seen a wood mount stamp get mounted, this is how you do it. And I never buy wood mount stamps, so this was a mistake when I bought it. I have no idea why I bought wood mount. I normally only ever buy clear. So, oh, gosh, it's hard to get off. Alright, and hopefully that's straight on the block. That's it. That's how hard it is to mount wood mount stamps. Okay, so now let's just do our normal heat embossing on this. I'm going to emboss in clear. I could use white, but I'm using um, white paper, so I'll just emboss with clear. Okay, Versamark all over our stamp. You know, I have my fan on because it's quite warm here today. So I'm hoping I don't blow embossing powder from here to tomorrow. <laughs> hey, yay, yay. That'd be interesting. Right, I think that's Versamarked enough. This is why I don't buy wood mount, particularly in background either, because it's so big. And that's probably not straight, but you know, who cares? It's just for the exercise. I should rub baby wipe on paper. Oh yeah, oh, I just draw it out. Oh no! I can get it out of the bin in the rain, that's a good idea. Oh no, here it is, sitting on the side. All right, so there's our stamp. Now, scrap paper. Clear embossing powder. You've all seen this done before. I'm sure you've all embossed a million times. And I always just run it at the top of something like this if it's all over and then just let it fall down the page, paper, whatever. And then it covers everything on the way down. Right, we're just going to tap off the excess. I'm going to try and get this back in the jar. You should have seen when I was making the samples. And I heat embossed that butterfly. I knocked over the jar. And it was on this black mat. It was black embossing powder. And it's like, oh, there's half a jar of embossing powder. I was not happy. I had the cluts that day. Everything was going wrong. All right, so it's going to get noisy. I'm just going to bring the heat tool in so we can melt this embossing powder. Right, so this is clear, so you're not going to see much happening unless the light catches it. Right, should I be worried that my heat tool is making that noise? It's going up and down, not the time for a new one. It's well loved, this heat tool. It's got to be like six years old. 
Okay, so you won't be able to see the embossing unless the light catches it because it's clear on white. But I've used the sheet music stamp. And now I'm going to grab my, I'll do gold, because I, you know, never have too much gold. Hello, Pam, thank you for joining me. And before I forget, let's try Lorraine's little suggestion of this baby wipe on the paper. There's all the ink paint on it. Let's see what happens, Lorraine. I think I'll let it dry too much. Ah, we'll try that. Next time I use the baby wipe. I've got them all sitting on stuff. Alright, so gold. We've got a gold sponge and you're just going to rub over. Hey Wendy, thank you for joining me. So just shake your bottle as well. Uh, just drop some on. Now, one thing I will say, when you are sponging, it does take a lot of paint. But there's lots of these bottles, so it'll go far. This is the sponge I used. And yes, you will end up all inky and all dirty. And you're just going to sponge across the top to get some colour on there. And like with any embossed resist, you're just going to wipe over the end with a tissue to get off what's on the embossing this would be an amazing background for a Christmas card All right I want deeper gold than that so I'm going to add more I really hope these carry over next year to um, our annual catalog because they're beautiful paints. All right, and then when I finish this, I am going to let this dry for a little bit. I might heat it a little bit so I can rub over with the tissue and not rub too much of my gold off. Okay, so I've got, yeah, enough gold on there, I think. And yes, I am really messy. But if you don't like mess, then um, make sure that you use gloves. Angie, glad your husband's mowing you have a pink fit. I'm a mess. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm going to show you one I've done. I've used... I can't remember what it's called now that stamp set. Someone will know. But look at that background, that gold shine on that. How cool is that? That is just gorgeous. All I'm seeing is glare. I'm sorry for my... There you go. So all you're going to do with this one is grab a tissue, which I don't believe I have any close. Rub over the top, just like with any embossed resist, just to get the paint that's on the embossing off, and your pattern will show through a lot more and will look really stunning. Let me just wipe that up out of the way so I don't get lots of gold on my, or I don't want it. There we go. Right, so again, just wipe it over with a tissue over your embossing and it brings up the embossing and gets rid of the paint. And I know it doesn't show that great on the screen because it like, I can't get the right light. Oh, geez. It looks more glary than anything to me when I'm watching it on my iPad, so. I don't know how to fix that, sorry. There we go, embossed resist with the shimmer paints. How pretty is that? 
yeah now that will take a while to dry so if you weren't here at the start then um, make sure that you don't stamp on it straight away you give it time to dry because um, your paper's now not as porous as before you started so okay and now I've probably got gold all over my glasses because I just pushed my glasses up. So but that's okay. So there you go. That's um, how many techniques did I show you all today? Lots. I'm just going to clean this up because it's worrying me that it's messy like that. Angie, you have shaving cream everywhere. <laughs> oh, I'm going to try that actually. The shaving cream with the um, shimmer paints. That would look really cool. So there we have, I'm going to bring them all back, all our different techniques. Uh, what have we got? We've got the stamping. Oops. We have the stamping, the embossed resist, the stenciling, the background, the um, using the sponges. What else did I do? I did others, didn't I? Oh, yeah, I did. Our butterfly. So we coloured with it. And what else? We watercolored with it. Oops. Okay, and we watercolored with it. So look at that shine on that watercolor. It's beautiful. This puddle is not doing so well over here though. We'll get rid of our puddle. So it hasn't dried quick enough. And I've just taken all that off. But anyway, all right, so there's lots of techniques to use the shimmer paints with don't be scared to experiment with them um, you'll get lots of really wonderful wonderful results so you've got like your smushing as well that's really cool I like this one too look at that that's gonna be really pretty but you will get in a mess so don't be scared of getting messy and that's it from me today so thank you for watching and I hope you, um, yes, don't be scared to get dirty, Angie. And I hope you have enjoyed all these wonderful techniques that you can do with these shimmer paints and I have inspired you to try them out. Don't forget my special of the week. Purchase any three of the pots and you get the sponges or the stamp and daubers for free. So thank you for watching and I hope you all get crafty soon and have a fantastic day. And I should be back tomorrow with another live crafting session. And I'll catch you all there. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.